We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. Okay, so I think that uh, we can start our panel discussion organized by the uh, by the um, by our organization from Poland by the um, by the uh, council with the young generation of the republic of Poland it's a pleasure and Anna to uh, to lead this panel to moderate this panel about very interesting uh, subject uh, it is about freedom of speech on the internet and we will talk about what does it mean for young people because we spend more and more time in the internet in social media uh, and there is uh, still a discussion all over the world uh, how this freedom of speech uh, seem uh, so it's a pleasure to have uh, here uh, Kinga Niemiec from the Council uh, of the Dialogue with the Young Generation of the Pro Republic of Poland. Uh, we have also Lily uh, Edinam uh, Bocrie uh, from Youth IGF, ICOC um, Youth uh, from Ghana, uh, from Youth IGF, Ghana Youth IGF. Uh, so. Thank you very much for, for taking this invitation. And we have also online uh, two panelists, Jakub Borów from Slovakia, Youth City Council uh, from uh, Bardejów. Uh, so we have uh, Jakub uh, on the screen and Jakub will also uh, answer our questions. And we have also Sonia De Apro uh, from uh, Russia, uh, from uh, also from Youth uh, IGF. Uh, so we'll, we'll start about the a question that will be the, uh, the 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 beginning of our discussion. Uh, so the question to uh, to Lily: How do you and young people in your country understand the uh, freedom of speech on the internet? Right. Thank you so much for the invitation, and always excited to discuss and to share perspectives from our part of the world, and to also pick learnings from things that are happening across the world. Especially because even though there's the same thing happening, there may be differences. And um, I'm going to share what Ghanaians and especially Ghanaian youth um, think about freedom of speech, and I'm going to also link it to um, the work that we've done with the Internet Society Youth Special Interest Group, which is usually very, very, very global. So. At Ghana, we have, um, just like other parts of the world, freedom of speech being a human right. What that means is that it's universally accepted that people can air their views about certain topics and that they're able to contribute to certain happenings. Um, over the years, what we've seen is that Ghanaians have also joined the worldwide um, wave of contributing to discussions online. And how they do this is through um, traditional media, that is radio, that is TV, and to a large extent, even social media. And where you'd find most people um, participating so much, that is young, young people participating, is social media. And um, you have young people advocating for issues that are happening in their country on social media, and that is how they express their freedom of speech. And usually, you'd find that um, there's a, there's, there are people who would want to probably tell you that this is where you can speak up to, and this is where you can probably get to that is not accept acceptable, or that is uh, there's a point that you speak to that probably violates also people's rights. And so what we've seen over the years on social media for Ghanaian youth is that people are learning to be very vocal about happenings in our community via traditional uh, uh, means, that's the traditional media, or using social media. I'm going to give you an example. So Ghana had elections um, just last year in 2020, and um, we had the hint that the, the government was probably um, at, like uh, preparing to do a certain shutdown so people do not propagate misinformation. You may think about it and think that okay, if you're using a uh, if you're using the, the idea of of the of a shutdown being good for people, maybe it's good so people do not spread misinformation in the wake of an election and to cause any fear and panic. But no, we all know what the implications of internet shutdowns are, right? So we had an uproar on social media. 
people took to social media to start conversations around it. And it didn't take even long. After a day, all those intents, all those plans came to a shut because nobody wants to hear um, that people's right to engage on social media and have access to connectivity is curtailed because you're thinking that there's going to be the spread of mis misinformation. So they didn't just say that stop it, but they gave alternative. What they did was to say, if you want to prevent the sharing of misinformation, maybe you should let people know that this is the effect of misinformation if you share it, and this is the f effect of fake news if you continue sharing it, especially in an election. And then implications that will have on our community. So in Ghana, the freedom of speech is understood. Sometimes there are issues where you have people um, having their rights get told because it's, 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 it will violate that, that of others, but people are understanding it and still evolving its, 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 its use in practicality um, because there are many things that come up when people speak on issues, um, especially in politics and general human rights in Ghana. Yes, yes, that's really interesting that the social media and freedom of speech in social media influences uh, more and more year by year uh, also in the politics uh, area and uh, and uh, by in the elections. So that's that's very interesting case. Uh, Kinga, how does this situation looks in Poland? So how do young people um, in your country, uh, in our country, understand uh, the freedom freedom of speech in social media? Well, first of all, for young people, freedom of speech is a value, is fundamental value. So uh, we uh, spend more and more time in virtual world. Uh, thanks to social media, we can uh, express our opinion, take part in discussion and build some community on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter we uh, can express ourselves and uh, create community meet uh, people who are uh, very who are uh, like us uh, we can uh, talk uh, talk more and more and uh, uh, improve our uh, uh, language or our uh, hobbies <laughs> And uh, freedom of speech is one of the most uh, important elements of social media activity for us. Uh, they are great communication channel that allow us uh, communication with people from all around the world. But unfortunately, many users uh, uh, encourage uh, hate speech. Also, uh, we have to pay attention uh, for hate speech because it's very uh, neg neg negative, negative yeah. uh, influence for our mental health, especially for uh, young people. Yes, yes, it's also very, very important aspect uh, in in recent years and during the pandemic, uh, also this mental health. Uh, but uh, now let's move to Slovakia, where we have uh, Jakub Borów uh, from the Youth City Council of uh, Bardej, a very beautiful uh, city in uh, Slovakia. Uh, Jakub, how do young people? in your country understand the freedom of speech uh, on the internet what are the differences uh, between uh, this situation in your country and these countries that are represented here by by the previous speakers uh, hello thank you for invita invitation um i would start with the fact that we are the first generation that we had it education uh, at our elementary schools it means that teachers were uh, ex explaining us uh, how does the internet works, that there is so many traps and that we have to be careful. And also we are the first generation that we experienced uh, cyber bullying in really like young age. And that's something different from the, from the older generation because when I asked my grandma, uh she had like really short curves of uh of like computer technology uh however we like what i remember from really first time i entered the elementary school when i was six years old teachers kept repeating that we have to be aware of what we post on the internet that internet is going to remember it forever and that uh the hate speech can be uh if it's not true or if it's not respectful then 
the police can uh, act. And this is something what is missing in older generation. And I think that's like the huge difference. And also the young generation in Slovakia, we are mostly using Instagram or, and we don't use Facebook that much anymore. And I think on Instagram, there is not a problem uh, that like the issue with uh, freedom of speech is not that uh, big as it is uh, on Facebook. So I, I would say that this is something really specific for Slovakia that uh, IT ed education or like cyber education uh, was is here already for almost 20 years. And that's something what really shaped my generation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jakub. It's really interesting. It's also really interesting this aspect of education and aspect of changing the generations and uh, the approach to to social media. Uh, now I would I would uh, want to ask uh, Sonia the Apro from Russia about the same question. So, how does it look? How do young people in Russia understand the freedom of speech in internet in social media? Well, thank you very much. Hello. Uh, yes, in Russia, I think as in many other countries, uh, freedom of speech, first of all, is a legal human right and opportunity to have voice and share with ideas, with thoughts. Uh, their opportunity is always about responsibility, responsibility of the possible consequences, the consequences of the ability to express your opinion, uh, sharing information, communicate, and etc. And those who understand this uh, also in Russia use this opportunity all the accuracy and knowledge of, uh, of why we are doing it. And uh, these are various communities of young leaders from different spheres, people who strive to change uh, the world for and give it new opportunities. They bring good to the world. But as in men, is any fairy tale, as we know, there is evil, which is the flip side of possibilities and does not take into account responsibility at all. So I think we all remember Article 19 of the Universal Dec Declaration of Human Rights, which states that everyone has uh, the right to freedom of opinion and expression. And the constitution of the Russian Federation contains 29, for example, which guarantees everyone freedom of thought and speech, the right to freely seek, receive, transmit, produce, and distribute information. In any legal way, freedom of the media is guaranteed and censorship is prohibited. So yes, I agree that uh, today for young generation also in Russia, a freedom of speech is a big value, so we value it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sana. And uh, now we are back uh, with uh, Lily. And the next question uh, about the development of internet and social media in the recent years, because it's really fast. And uh, I think that 30, 40 years ago, um, more adults, people, more adults uh, don't even imagine that this development will be so fast. So I would want to ask you about um, just like in the SWOT analysis, uh, which uh, what, what are the uh, strengths and the threats of the uh, development of social media? Because we see not only the the good po positive uh, sides, but uh, but only maybe negative. Which sides would you um, would you enumerate? Right. Um, so I think it's very important because uh, you, you, I'm going to run through in Ghana the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. Just like you mentioned SWOT. So over the years, we have dwelt mostly um, on the strength of the internet and how it's, it's able to get people connected, even um, outside their, their jurisdiction, that is their geographical location. It takes them beyond, allows you to connect with people from across the world, allows you to access opportunities from across the world. So that's like a strength of it. And we have the advent of COVID. Now with the advent of COVID, people have been able to take full course models online. 
People have been able to take their work online. People have been able to connect with families and friends and even undergo therapy even online. In Ghana, we've had people who had assistance um, online because, right, that's like that's the power of technology for us and the strength that it gives us to be able to use it. Now, because technology is very fast evolving, there are other things that come with it. And you want to talk about a weakness like security and trust. And one of the things that you hear most people talk about is how secure the internet is for usage, that people can trust um, their digital assets, can trust the information going online, can trust even their activities online between their friends, hoping that nobody intercepts it for whatever reason. That's a weakness. And the weakness there does not just dwell on the on, the, on, on technology and the space that you're in, but it's with the, the, the ideas that people have and the awareness that they have to be able to protect themselves. It's a weakness. Not many people know about it. Not many people know about VPNs. People still have weak dictionary words as passwords. People still have to learn that they have to update their software as and when they see it. I mean, I'm very guilty. When I see the prompt to update, I keep rescheduling and rescheduling because I don't want to restart my machine because I'm working on it at the moment. But those are weaknesses and things that are not helpful for us because maybe a developer has detected a bug and is looking to, fail, um, to fix it so that you can have very good software to work with. So the strength is, I mentioned the strength, the weakness is this one. And opportunities are what we are seeing currently, that we young people are able to shape our dreams internet are able to contribute to building technologies because the internet is for everyone and our ideas as young people like our friends said from um, the other country that we are the very first generation of active users of the internet who are going to be growing up not just using it but learning to build it learning to innovate right so we have all these ideas that are helpful so the opportunity for us there is that we are able to innovate in, in, in technology and for the internet. And we are also able to learn some more. Everybody knows about the University of YouTube. You can go to YouTube and if you were say a doctor, you can learn data analytics because you are going to commit to learning data analytics and probably move into bioinformatics because you have the health part and you have now the analytics part. That's the opportunity the internet gives to us. But there are also many threats. Threats that stem from different angles. We've spoken about the security. You have even spoken about trust. There's even stability when it comes to um, the internet because of internet shutdowns um, where governments and many um, in many places even military are running uh, are using the internet as a tool to de-weaponize people who, have, who are supposed to be having access to it right but um, right now there are shutdowns that are really not um, helpful for people another threat you want to think about is what um, I've heard many advocacy groups advocate against it's called backdoor access everybody knows that encryption is good but usually you, hear, you, you have some governments say that you should allow some access so that if you wanted to have any investigation on somebody, you can find them, you can get some details on them. But once you leave a hole or a loophole in a security system, it's already flawed. Because the very way you used to secure a breach, or like you used to leave that, um, that, that space open for you to be able to investigate more people, is that same loophole that somebody who's a hacker or an attacker can use to um, breach a whole system. So um, essentially, because technology is fast evolving, even over the even over time, we'll, we'll be we'll be um, we'll be likely to see more things that are happening. And a very one of the things that are happening fast that we are seeing before our eyes is the effect of technology and the internet even on the environment. You hear people talk about environmental sustainability and digital sustainability. Are the tools and the devices we are building? Um, helping us in the long run? Would it have any effect of cli on climate change in the long run? What is this like in the future? If you wanted to connect the next billion, would we connect the next billion and in the long run suffer from it because we have mined cobalt for devices, we have dumped waste um, in, 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 in Ghana. In, in Ghana, we have a dump site called Agbogloshi, which is seen to be the largest e-waste dump site, if not in, 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 in Africa, maybe the world. There are many people who bring second-hand devices from outside into Abubuloshi. And it's a problem because they are burning, they are recycling it illegally, and it's not helping even their health and the environment. So that's also another threat um, that exists. And one of the things that are evolving over the time that people are beginning to talk about it now, that there can be some subtle effect of the devices and the development on the environment. And we have to start discussing that also.
Yes, this aspect of shutdowns is also really uh, interesting because we have many situations when we have the problems with Facebook or Messenger when young people, uh, for example, from the first year of, uh, of their studies, uh, could not meet because they cannot communicate without a Messenger, without Facebook, and there were many accidents that they, <laughs> they were not able to, to even meet. Uh, in the evening but uh, i will want to ask also to to wide to make this aspect wider about the regulations of social media do you think that um, lily do you think that uh, the um, situation of social media the impact of social media on young people on the and uh, to the uh, many people in 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 in, in, in all over the world uh, is so big that it should be regulated by state or, or by the um, or, um, uh, organizations, maybe like uh, United Nations or, or uh, other organizations, uh, continental organizations, international organizations, uh, or not, or, or it should not be regulated. I ask this because, uh, for example, in Europe we have from one year the discussion, the very serious discussion about the Digital Service Act that is uh, led by the uh, European Commission and the discussion of uh, between presidencies now the slovenian uh, president presidency in in europe is uh, is really interesting uh, and and the main and the main uh, just uh, the, the 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 main um, answers are that uh, the impact of social media is so big that it should be maybe more regulated how wh what is your point of view right so i'm going to share from experience right the conversation is very nuanced in the sense that people think that um there should be essentially a balance if you wanted to um regulate whatever there should be a balance and this is why i was on a radio show where my friend says something about social media regulation and even content regulation and i'm going to come to that he said that there are people who sit behind um account that are, that are fake, parody accounts and all those and perpetrate a lot of things and essentially you don't find them. He was thinking that if you can say it online, probably should say it to my face. I mean, because he had personal issues, but like that's just like the very the very basis of that. But there are many people who who have caused an uproar on social media who we don't usually know, and people think that maybe if you started having say ID on social media it would be helpful. But let's think about it. By dint of the fact that we are in an era of web 2.0 which is like where people create a lot of content moving into web 3.0 where there are going to be a lot of device and digital i mean um, involvement in our content it means that people are likely to still see uh, most of these fake profiles and everything come up now there's something about regulation that i've come to realize there's regulation that stifles innovation and regulation that can promote innovation there should be a fine line between the both of them because essentially if you're regulating the use of social media, it means you're going to be curtailing people's right to probably create content and to share content, especially those that are local, because now we're even advocating that there should be more local content created. So if you were to start regulating content and social media usage, it means that there's, there's, to a large extent, people that won't be able to use it and won't be able to innovate to the times and to be able to maximize the use of social media and technologies to a large extent. So um, I'm thinking that what are we essentially regulating? What do we want to do? Is it the platforms or the content? Is it, um, is it, is it uh, usage? What is it that we are looking to regulate? And it, it, it can bring into perspective maybe an idea on how to do it and do it properly. Um, I know from 2018, there's been a conversation around um, net neutrality. People talk about allowing everything and anything, access to that and everything, but I'm wondering, what the implications will be if people have access to everything and anything and if you if you can access any site or anything from anywhere would it be helpful for you um those are like questions that we have to think about when we think about regulation so i for one will think about that nuanced conversation about where to draw the line what is it we are, what is it that we want to regulate and how can we do it so that it doesn't stifle people's it doesn't prevent or, or breach people's rights and doesn't also stifle innovation and people's freedom to work online and 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 that's generally essentially what i have in mind around regulation
Okay, thank you very much. And now the question to Kinga. We'll come back uh, to to the to the previous question about the, the positive and negative sides of uh, the develop uh, development of social media and this impact of social media on the on our uh, daily life. Uh, what positive and negative sides of social media can you uh, see? I'm glad you're asking. This is uh, an essential question. Social media has strong influence on the freedom of young person. Online communication plays a significant role in our uh, life, in our daily routine. Uh, we can't imagine live without social media uh, at this century. Uh, so online uh, communication is something we can do every time uh, on a bus we can communicate uh, with all the world uh, young people learn on right online uh, write with friends uh, date uh, and uh, uh, work on social media when we browsing instagram tiktok facebook uh, on other social media we uh, compare themselves to the uh, idol to the influencers uh, well, young people are in date with uh, retouched photos, the ideal of uh, influencers' life. Unfortunately, not everyone uh, is aware that Instagram is only a part of uh, these people's life. Uh, this can negativity affect the well-being of uh, young people because of the compare, uh, because some standards on Instagram that's. Uh, impossible to uh, to get uh, that quick in that quick time uh, that uh, our idols shows uh, every single day uh, but on the other hand a lot of young people get inspiration uh, they are finding new hobbies meeting new people creating a community i believe that development of social media is uh, inevitable uh, this powerful tool makes our daily function very easy mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, kinga and now the uh, the next question to Jakub, to Slovakia, because I mentioned the Digital Service Act, which is proceed by the uh, in the area of the European uh, Union, and Slovakia is a part, uh, very important part, also uh, on the European Union. So, Jakub, what do you think? Uh, the mm, regulation of social media is needed. This uh, the social media has so much power that. Uh, should be regulated by state or by uh, European Union or an, another uh, international organization. What is your opinion on that? that? First of all, we have to understand how Facebook or YouTube is working. Uh, if you will put uh, to, to, to search uh, in, for example, let's use YouTube, uh, dogs, yeah. You will click on the first video of docs and then the YouTube will keep proposing you a new and new and new uh, videos of the docs. And in the end, you you will find yourself in the situation when you are clicking still on the new and new video of the of the docs. Yeah. And uh, it's because the main goal, the main aim of the YouTube is to keep you on the Internet on on the on that platform as long as possible, because uh, they want to uh, show you, um, let's say, com uh, commercial advertising, and the more time you spend there, the more money they will get from from the companies that are advertising on the YouTube. And that's why this algorithm was created to keep you there, and you keep just like cl clicking on the same videos because uh, the algorithm algorithm works like that. Uh, it's not a problem until the situation when in Slovakia, for example, they, they when the pandemic started, people started protesting. And if you clicked first on the video where uh, the people who were protesting against face, ma face mask were, uh, let's say, taken by the police, uh, they used water cannons, they used many uh like let's say they used like the police uh used uh, a power uh against people then you just kept uh, kept uh like watching the videos uh of police brutality and then if you clicked first on the video where they are attacking police then 
YouTube was uh, showing you just the videos where the police uh, is attacked by by the by the protesters, and then you uh, are um, how to say that then you are just watching one point uh, one one uh, point of view from one perspective, and uh, we realized that we have two groups of the people which are against uh, one against another, and it's mostly because. Uh, that's how do social media works. They keep you showing the same image still over and over over, over again. Uh, when I mentioned dogs, if you click on the dogs, it keeps showing you dogs. It, it, like YouTube will not show you a cat because uh, YouTube knows that you want to see more dogs. And if you keep clicking on the dogs or if you keep cli clicking on the, let's say, right wing uh, content or left wing content, then Social media will not show you the other perspective, and that's like really serious, a serious thing. That's why European Union has uh, such a problem with Facebook, because uh, that's like the main reason why there is a huge uh, radicalization in Europe, and uh, it's not. Uh, mostly problem of young people, but I would say it's definitely a problem of people who are over 30. And this is something what really needs to be solved. Mm, and I think one from the uh, solutions to the future may be the uh, subscri so when you pay subscription, when you pay to YouTube to not show you uh, the new advertisement, because then the, the YouTube is uh, making money without, uh, like, without need to keep you on the YouTube as much as, as, as they can. And this is something what will be, I think, um, this is something what can change the, the current situation because the ra radicalization in the society is really huge, especially here in Slovakia, it's critical. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jakub. I will want to ask more uh, about uh, the specific situation of uh, of the freedom of speech uh, in the social media, because yeah, more than uh, a year ago, we have a very uh, huge, huge situation, um, uh, very, uh, very loud situation uh, about social media uh, in the campaign in in United States uh, in the United States with where Donald Trump was uh, banned in Twitter and in Facebook we can have a positive or negative opinion about this person but it was a huge uh, I think huge moment in the history uh, of social media that the president of the United States one on one of the most powerful countries in the world was uh, banned uh, and um, it had uh, a big uh, impact on the uh, on the campaign uh, i think uh, so in this in this situation i i will want to ask jakub uh, and maybe similar situations in the future that can uh, that can appear what do you think that the situation of social media should be more regulated or not and they uh, they should uh, and just take decisions about the, uh, the 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 ban of very very important per, uh, people. People. Uh, as a student of law, <laughs> uh, that's a really interesting question. I think um, the social media should not be the the one who are banning people. Uh, I think we will discuss it later because we have some also some decisions of the courts. But I think. Uh, it should be the, the state, the state policy that is banning people, uh, not not uh, some private company shall say it like, oh, tomorrow I will ban that person because I don't know what. I think w the state uh, should create the the regulations and and the tools that will allow uh, or will give us opportunity uh, to really decide who should be banned and who not. I think it's like really a huge power in the hands of private company. Uh, so that's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much, Jakub. And now it's time to uh, to Sonia. Uh, Sonia, the same question about the regulations of the social media. What do you think that this uh, situation should be more regulated or maybe uh, not so much regulated? What's your point of view? 
Yes, thank you. The activity and functioning of social media takes place in a cross-border space where there are no clear boundaries yet. So uh, I can say that, of course, there are local, regional and national rules and laws. For example, uh, we know the GDPR uh, or we know the experience of China and Russia in building sovereign cyberspace. But there are atten attempts to regulate social media. It is very important to be able to strengthen the security of users and eliminate the criminal part that exists in uh, social media as well, you know. However, this uh, active use uh, broadcasting meanings, values and uh, dissemination of information and news materials, uh, then in this case, one should adhere more to the possibility of, I think, and uh, awareness of one's own nature as a responsibility and mission of life. After all, freedom is available because it carries a positive responsibility, which must certainly be used in good intentions, knowing that it can affect both the present and the future, including future generation, in whose hands the same will be that responsibility. And we should now, now teach uh, uh, how to use this right. So I think that it's more uh, like about self-regulation about us uh, like users that is my point thank you thank you very much uh, sonia and now the question to uh, lily i want to make this discussion about the regulations maybe wider you you say uh, some aspects about this but i would want to ask that should in your opinion should social media be more engaged more committed to um, to removing illegal, illegal of or harmful uh, content uh, in in a social media uh, area, and what about fake news? Because uh, fake news is uh, more and more popular, and especially during the time of pandemic, especially during the time of vaccination process, uh, a lot of uh, fake news uh, from all sides, I, I I would say, are are spread, and how to fight with that. Exactly. So we've seen over the years how important information is. You just mentioned very important scenarios where the availability of information can make or break a process. You mentioned fake news and say the era of a pandemic, fake news and misinformation in the era of vaccination. And I'm even going to mention in the era of say elections. Imagine somebody sits somewhere and says, okay, guys, um, maybe there's an elect election in the country. This presidential candidate has moved a whole electoral, say, box or ballots to another place. And then the, the followers of this person begins to attack, and right? And there's, and there's chaos everywhere. That is the effect of somebody's very, very loose talk on social media that has cost maybe millions and millions and millions of people. Probably if you go down history, we'll probably have instances like this. But the essence of the history and experiences that people have had for us now is for us to be very vigilant and look out for um, things that usually cause um, um, chaos and unrest in our communities. And where it starts from is social media, because like I mentioned, we're in this era of the Web 2.0. Moving into Web 3.0, where there are more content creation for people and even more devices are, are, are getting connected. And so many people are getting connected and also sharing information. So the tendency of somebody to create information that suits them, that's not entirely true. And that could have repercussions. It's very high. It is very necessary that, um, I mean, they're, they're already... I think fake news detector sites where you can probably even put a URL or a news URL and probably detect whether it's real or not. I think even Google does something like that for you to be able to de detect if a particular news item that you've pro you are probably reading was true or not. And it's good because you you do you don't want to have to deal with. Uh, more like a, a reactive approach to solving this. That is, the harm has already been done. They are trying to um, help it. The proactive approach is what um, people do when they copy the link and go to verify whether it's true before they keep they, they start to share. So I think to a large extent, there's the, there's a need for a proactive approach to curtailing the spread of misinformation be before it gets far. And one way is to have detectors or um, ways to, to remove them before they even spread, and also Maybe we should even ha have some penalty for people who spread this information. Um, we're penalizing them 
um, that will be like in, in the stream and maybe a projection in the future. How do you make sure that this, a, a particular news site that is maybe very notorious for posting fake news is not continually in action and continually sharing information? How do you make sure that you're able to um, find them out and calm them down so it, it doesn't continue? It's very important. I mean, we can't um, overemphasize how important it is information can, can um can cause people, um, whether positively or negatively. So the earlier we start detecting and uh, removing fake news and misinformation, the better. But we all have a role to play. Yourself, if you have information on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, do you do any checks? Is there any fact check, any fact checking for you? How do you go about it? I mean, I, I was just in a session where a friend was mentioning that we now even have Older folks or people who didn't grow up with, with technology and digital tools being the perpetrators, the large perpetrators of the spread of misinformation. Because my mom sends me a lot of stuff saying that maybe there's going to be uh, a meteorite coming from somewhere. And that's because somebody has sent it to her and told her to send to 12 people or to send to 15 people or send to this number of people and something happens. So there has to be also, for us who are young people who are in the space and understand this, there's supposed to be this reverse mentoring where because we are aware of the situations to also teach our parents and the older folks. Um, I think that's also one part. We know we speak about youth inclusion uh, um, most of the time, but it's also the exclusion of the older folks. Everybody thinks that uh, maybe they are the older ones, um, so they don't need so much help, but they need help to in as much as we also do. And that, in that way, when we start with ourselves as subjects, who can, uh, where we can stop the spread from us, then that, it, it means we wouldn't get even into the platforms where it gets the momentum that it gets to go even further. So that's, those are my views, essentially. Yes, and the another side of this uh, problem uh, are users that maybe some by uh, because of the failures of the social media uh, platforms uh, they are they, they have maybe problems with their with their content that it is not illegal or harmful but the algorithm of social media decided mm -hmm. that it is uh, ha uh, illegal or, or, or harmful or, or it is uh, fake news because uh, if Facebook or Instagram uh, or Twitter uh, would have to check uh, every message, every content uh, by person. Uh, it, I think, it should hire uh, five, uh, maybe a, a few uh, billions or <laughs> millions of people yeah. to to check it. Uh, mm. So. Uh, should be any formal appeal show, show me a, a, any formal path to appeal from the decision of the platform if mm -hmm. we do not uh, agree with that what do you think Lily? Uh, that's that's actually i mean it's, it's a very important point of mention so the there's the there is the issue of tagging and removal and the issue of wrong tagging and removal of information and how to appeal to uh, for that i I have not seen a clear, I've not seen a practical way that that has been done yet, but I see. I mean, let's just say, what people ha what what happens to people when probably their profiles are like brought down. You know, uh, usually, Instagram, sorry, Twitter can can say that you've posted something that was not appropriate, and so they pull down your profile temporarily, and they they give you a, an option to probably report or say it was the wrong, like it was it was not the right thing, or maybe it was a mistake that that happened, not for you, but maybe on their part, and you can send a text. It's like a, a it's like a response to the team, the tech team, and they are probably able to escalate it to who is in, is in charge. Maybe if that happens, that can be a route to follow. That there is an uh, there's an opportunity for you to um, give feedback to reach somebody who can escalate it to another person who probably reinstates your information if it's right. From the top of my mind, that's what I think is around to go. That there is feedback and opportunity for you to um, say if something was right or done or, or, or done um, wrongfully because it was not like fake news. And these are machines and these are platforms and there's still learning that's happening. And that's why from time to time they do a lot of tests to fix all these. So it's good that we are talking about them now so they can know that even though we, they are rightful tagging of like misinformation, they could be also the wrongful side of it. And Kinga, what is your point of view about this uh, removal or 
illegal content uh, by by social media platform and maybe sometimes it is not uh, correct it is uh, it is failure of uh, it could be the the failure of the uh, social media platform and the user doesn't agree with that decision should it be a formal uh, path to appeal from the decision of uh, uh, against the, the decision of uh, social media platform I'm glad you asked last year when most people uh, of us had work and uh, learn uh, online uh, social media has become the main channel of communication many young people uh, started to move their business into virtual world uh, so many companies have made their activities and truly really depend on social media for influencers and uh, young people losing access uh, to their social content uh, social media accounts was really a tragedy. They lose uh, money, they lose uh, contract or uh, everything what they built for many years. Uh, well, in my opinion, the first step th that a blocked uh, user should take is uh, contact to the administration of a given portal or uh, administration Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but uh, thanks God, uh, cooperation uh, with uh, Polish representative office of Facebook. Uh, we have uh, we are first country that uh, have uh, such a so such solution will start working. Uh, Facebook uh, cooperate with our government, and uh, the agreement we site supports the protective of freedom of speech on the internet, and Polter users will receive uh, a de facto additional appeal against block head blockades. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's really interesting that this this case of, of, of Poland that with because of the co cooperation with Facebook we have this uh, this path to to appeal formal in the government uh, side and if we do not uh, agree we we have to uh, we have to uh, connect it with the um, with the it is connected with the applications official government applications that confirm that you are uh, uh, a person that. It, exist and and it's it's not a, a, a fake uh, person lily would you add something um really I, I think it's well said what she said the steps are even more elaborate because i was th i was thinking that route of like um responding to um like she said if they, they bring it down you're able to like give feedback and then um she's even said given an example that poland is doing this and this is like a good opportunity for us all to learn i didn't know this right so i'm going to even look into it some more and i think it's one way that we can pick best practices from um, countries that are spearheading and, and things in this regard. I don't, that was just like to say that I didn't know that and I, I have to probably look into it almost. It's very important. And uh, I'm going to be heading to another session, but um, I'm available to answer any questions, should there be any. So um, for any other sessions, that any other questions that may come out, I'm able to answer them also. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lily. And now the question to uh, to Jakub. Uh, this c connected questions uh, about the two sides uh, of our discussions. So, uh, do you think, Jakub, that the uh, social media platforms should be more and more engaged, uh, more and more committed uh, to um, to just uh, ban or to 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 shut down uh, the uh, users that spread disinformations and uh, should social media be more and more committed to removing illegal or harmful content or content uh, connected with the fake news and the uh, another aspect about this user that uh, that doesn't agree with the decision of uh, social media platform should uh, it be the regulated path to 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 appeal against the decision of social media platform what is your opinion yeah like i would mention uh again the legal aspect uh of this question uh we have article 10 of of human rights act and here is al also mentioned the freedom of speech and there there is one case when uh one platform um uh, let's say it was also social media and and the users were posting their uh fake uh and and let's say hateful information and uh there is like 
to say it short, uh, there is a case on Delphi uh, versus Estonia when uh, when uh, European Court of Human Rights said that yes, the platform uh, is responsible for hateful uh, comments of, of its users when the users are anonymous. So we can also use uh, like what we have so far, uh, like what the Kurt said uh, so far. But also, I, I would mention our vaccination campaign in Bardio that is going on right now. Uh, the most of the hateful uh, comments, like mm, like some people wanted to kill us as as young people, and most of those profiles were fake. And we asked our prime minister what we can do when, when the profiles are obviously fake. And uh, he said, there is no way, just contact the police. And that's again connected to the law. And the law is here for thousands of years to protect us, to protect society, to protect individuals. And I think it, it should be uh also like we should also be able to to uh, or the law should be also to able individuals uh and the society online and again what i said in previous question uh we met a lot of people <laughs> here in Bardio that were trying to uh pursue, pursue us that the vaccination will kill us and it's not because they were stupid or not educated or something like that they just like they just clicked on some video or on some post on the facebook and then the facebook started showing them the content that was uh keep repeating that vaccination is going to kill you it's same as if you would today give a like to uh, uh to someone who just posted on the Facebook that President Duda uh, is responsible for COVID pandemics in the world. And you, you give the like, and then the Facebook will keep showing you more and more posts uh, that the President Duda is responsible for the whole, whole pandemic. Of course, it's not true. However, if you are every day, every day you see it on your, uh, in your feed on, on Facebook, then you will start believing it because uh, it's what uh, Gable said. If you, uh, if a lie is big enough and repeat it uh, enough, then people will start believing it, and that's something what is really dangerous for our society. And we should really think about the people who are influenced uh, by fake news and the hate speech. Uh, that, uh, in fact. It's not just them being responsible for that. It's also the social media, the algorithm, as we mentioned. And that's something what really should be regulated by the law. And I think that's what already Kurt said. And um, it's something that uh, also like uh, in Slovakia, the government is preparing new law uh, about uh, hate speech on the internet. However, as already, I think Sona uh, mentioned that, uh, it's not, the internet is global network and it's not enough if we will have just local initiatives or um, state initiatives. We really, need, we really need to take global actions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jakub. And the same question to, to Sonia about uh, the uh, commitment of the social media platforms uh, to uh, to just um, removal uh, of of the uh, of the content that is uh, seen uh, as illegal or harmful or as a fake news. What do you think about this? Should social media uh, be more committed in that end? In the another way, uh, should users have uh, a clear path to appeal from this decision of the Facebook, for, for example? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Well, social media, as we know, has a somewhat uh, uncontrollable power in terms of the speed of information dissemination. It is worth, for example, for any media to post news in their account or on the website. 
as it immediately spreads around the world. And here there is an enormous risk in the spread of fake news. And I would like also to mention there is also a risk of children's collision, for example, in harmful content, which can have a strong uh, psychological and traumatic effect on them, which can have irreparable con consequences, both for the child and for society as a whole. And what you said about the commitment of uh, companies, of uh, IT giants, uh, we can say it. Well, I think that um, uh, it is hard to say because um, uh, it is very hard to track down the dissemination of illegal information, even for law enforcement agencies, even for companies, remove it before it does harm. For example, you know, in Russia, the distrib distribution of prohibited content and the violation of legislation regarding the dissemination of information is a rather close, closely monitored. We have, for example, the case with the slowdown of Twitter in Russia. Uh, in addition, Feinstein a post uh, on other social media such as YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, and uh, also Twitter cannot uh, every every simple uh, dissemination, every simple uh, illegal information that has spread in in the social media. So therefore, in, in my vision, uh, in my vision, companies, brands, who's, uh, those who have a voice and simply social media users are aware of their respons responsibility and rely on, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, self-regulation. Well, uh, we are, accustomed to reacting to fake news, for example, emotionally, brightly, making informational reasons out of everything, exaggerating and creating, in a sense, a show. Often the users themselves, the audience itself, makes a sensation out of nothing. It's a matter of reaction. So therefore, in my opinion, we need to be able to change the policy of our attitude towards fake news and even to any information in a more uh, debatable and calm form, where the audience consuming information from the media or social media and will act for this media as an ally and assistant, creating a platform for public discussion of uh, news submitted in a fake format. You know, the time is not too far away when news and more complex materials will be created by artificial intelligence and a person must have enough wisdom, patience and knowledge to cope with the common changes and what quality information he will receive. In, in other words, we need to be prepared. There is uh, a free source rule in journalism, you know, so until the information is confirmed, is not confirmed uh, by free authoritative sources, it is not considered reliable. So roughly the same principle should be used when consuming information from, from any means of disseminating information. And this already depends on the level of digital literacy, I think, of users, which is very important to think about and propose solutions both at the state level and at the company's uh, stakeholders should pay attention, I think, to the development of digital literacy of the population and make the solution of this issue a priority on their agenda since uh, this directly uh, affects security, for example, digital education, sustainable development, raising new personal and new generation. So this is very hard issue and very mm -hmm. serious. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sonia. That was the last uh, answer to our questions during our uh, debate. So thank you very much about the discussion of the uh, freedom of speech uh, and on the internet and how does young people understand uh, it. Uh, we mentioned a lot of subjects uh, from the um, uh, illegal of, or harmful content to the um, uh, to the fake news through fake news uh, and to the to even. Uh, to the weaknesses and strengths of the social media and development of the social media. So thank you very much for taking part, for part participation in uh, our debate organized by the uh, by, by, by the 
but by our organization, so by the Council of the Dialogue with the Young Generation of the Republic of Poland. And thank you very much, uh, panelists. Uh, it's so Kinga Nemec uh, from Poland, uh, Lily Ediman, uh, Bocrie uh, from uh, Ghana, Youth IGF, uh, also Jakub Borov from the Slovakia, the Youth City Council on Bar the Youth, and Sona de Agro from uh, Russia. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to Emilia Kaminska that uh, support us in organizing this panel uh, so this discussion uh, maybe will be uh, more and more uh, wider uh, so uh, thank you very much uh, once again <laughs>